Well, this is Dr. Jeffrey Tebert, Assistant Director of National Fellowships in the Center for Undergraduate Scholarly Engagement, or CUSE. And for the next maybe 20 to 30 minutes, possibly longer, uh, we will be uh, discussing the Truman Scholarship application. So this is not designed to be um, an info session about the Truman Scholarship there. Um, you'll find one of those online already, actually, at this uh, same uh, website if you're going through the ND Fellowships YouTube channel. Um, so if you don't know anything about the Truman and are just looking for basic information, you can check out that video. This video will be looking more specifically at the application, um, how to approach it, uh, what the Truman Foundation is looking for in these applications, and we will also um, spend some time going through an application that was successful in the past in receiving an interview uh, so you can see what a successful application um, looks like. So um, to do this I have some um, files that we will be going through and I'll be displaying them here on the screen but before I do that um, I just want to emphasize right up front that um, what the Truman Foundation, what the reviewers for the Truman Foundation will ultimately be looking for um, are students who have been change agents already because that is an indicator that they will go on to um, become change agents in the future. They will continue to be change agents in the future. So their ultimate goal is to support people who are going to be change agents in society and the way they their 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 evidence for that is that you've already been one. Now um, by change agent what they mean is essentially that you have identified a social problem or a social need that you have um, come up with some kind of solution or some way to address that problem and then that you have um, inspired other people to follow you essentially in, um, in implementing that solution or that response that you have come up with and then it led to some kind of concrete change. So for instance there are many ways to have done this but one way would be to uh, start a movement uh, or an organization on campus that um, was perhaps addressed toward human rights and the organization then went on to hold um, information sessions or uh, public lectures that made the campus more aware of human rights issues which then led um, you know, more and more students to participate in this effort. Um, so then the group grew from the beginning of maybe five interested students to 100 by the end of your tenure as the leader of this group. That's the kind of thing that they're thinking about here. They want to see um, real leadership, real initiative, um, that you have done something and that requires a sustained commitment that has led to change. So you know, five hours here, five hours there, that's not going to mean much to Truman. They like to see really sustained commitment to a cause that has led to some kind of real change that you can point to. Ideally, you'll have evidence or out or statistics or, um, or a new policy or something that you can point to um, that indicates that you caused some kind of change. So that being said, um, Let's briefly try to go through the um, application and what I'll put on the screen is just a sample version of the application that they provide on the Truman website. Um, if you're applying for the Truman you'll actually be doing this online so it's not going to look exactly like this. Um, but what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to focus in just on certain parts of it. They ask for basic information. Here you'll see that they ask for um, educational information, information about college and high school activities. One thing to note here is that um, with these college and high school activities, 
they do say to list in descending order of significance, so that's important. Um, they give you examples of the kinds of things they want you to include under here. Um, and you will have limited space to describe what you did or what your role was. Note that you can list the offices, of course, but um, for instance, if you were part of an organization that they might not be familiar with, you'll have a very small amount of space um, to describe that um, activity or that organization. And we'll, I'll, you'll see what we mean by that or what they mean by that, what I mean by that, when we look at the uh, sample application. You can see what that person did. But you'd have no more than um, what would amount to a couple of lines to do that. So you'll be able to describe things a little bit, but not much. And you won't submit a resume or CV with this application. So this part of the application really serves as your resume. So um, you want to make sure that you highlight the things here that really are most um, important. And if something really was not significant or um, you know you spent five hours doing it uh, one time in your sophomore year, it's probably not worth listing on here. Um, ideally, you'll want to put things here that were significant um, commitments or required significant amounts of time. Um, item three here, public service and community activities. Here they are really talking about things beyond the campus. So they differentiate this from as you can see here, college and high school activities. Number three wants to hear about public service and community activities, and they give some examples of what they mean here. But these would be things um, really that are off the campus. If it's a campus organization, um, this would not count. But um, if it was potentially working um, on a project that was uh, set up for you through perhaps the Center for Social Concerns, that could count here as a community activity. So it, it has to be, um, if it's sponsored by the, the university, so if it's um, something like um, a fall break activity that the Center for Social Concerns runs, that would go as a college activity. But if the Center, Center for Social Concerns connected you to a group and then you independently went and served that group, um, that would be different. So um, that's how they distinguish here between two and three. Now again, note that in number three they're asking you for the number of weeks that you were active. And what that should indicate to you is that um, they expect you to have been active for a number of weeks. So again, if this is something you did for one week, um, it's probably not going to be worth listing here unless it really took up a considerable amount of time over the course of that week. And they put dates and number of weeks active here, so it might be something you were involved in for three years, but you did four weeks a year. Then you could list the dates as being those three years, but the number of weeks active would be 12. So um, again, you know, you want to put things here that really mean something. Um, if you start putting in insignificant things or things that are relatively minor, it might look like you're reaching just to fill the space. Don't worry about that. They don't even expect you to have six things to list here. Um, you might, but they don't expect it. And I just, again, want to say they're looking more for depth of commitment. So if you had one activity here that you had done for four years and you were active 50 weeks out of every year, that's going to mean more to them than having six activities where you were active only two weeks out of a year for each. So just keep that in mind. Item four here, um, this was not student government. These are things that um, are um, beyond that but still connected to um, federal or uh, local governments in some way. So if you volunteered on a political campaign, if you had an internship with uh, the State Department, if you are in ROTC, um, if you, you know, served as an intern for a city council, this is where you would list that information. And again, with the activity, you will have a brief amount of space to describe what you did. So, um, you know, you want to be sure that um, you keep that in mind as you're filling this out. Now, again, if you have to leave four blank, that's okay. Um, four is going to be especially relevant if you are claiming that you want to pursue a career in government. Then they would probably like to see that you had already started to do that. Um, if that isn't part of your plan, it may not make sense to have anything here. So don't worry if a section has to be blank. 
five, um, this is more about um, jobs that you've had. And um, this is kind of an employment record since high school graduation. Note that they are not um, talking about high school jobs here. This would be since you graduated. And they ask this in part um, because, well, one, these jobs may be relevant, of course, to what you're proposing uh, for your Truman uh, mission. But the other element is that if they see that you've had to work 40 hours a week throughout your undergraduate education, that will help them to understand why perhaps you were not as involved in service as some other people were who perhaps didn't have to work. Um, so that's why this section actually is important, even if the jobs are not directly related to service um, or you know to your eventual um, career plan, it's still important to list them here because it'll, it indicates a part of your story. Um, now item six, this is pretty straightforward. Any awards, scholarships, publications, special recognitions in descending order of significance. Again, you will have a very small amount of space to describe what these are, but make sure you do. If it's an award that they probably don't know about, so maybe an internal Notre Dame award, you'll want to briefly describe um, why you received it and ideally how much it was for, if it was a monetary award, um, maybe how many people receive it. So if, you know, a thousand people apply and one person gets it, you want to make sure that they that they know that. Um, so that's what number six is looking for. Number seven here, now here's where we start to get into the more significant um, questions. And um, it's important to um, note here that you know, it's not going to look exactly like this in the online application. You will see that this is the layout is very different. Um, but for number seven, what they want to see here is an example of um, a leadership experience that you had. And you ultimately get, I believe it's 2,000 um, characters to do this. So you won't have a, an enormous amount of space. 2,000 characters can amount to, depending on how long the words are, and that does include spaces, it would be um, probably something like uh, 400 words, perhaps, maybe 300. So you'll have to be fairly um, concise about what you put here. But they again, want to see a um, description of um, a leadership activity. So the key here is to emphasize how you were a leader, how you inspired people to follow you, how you went into a situation and took charge of it and changed it. You want to be specific about the things you did that indicate leadership. Don't just tell them that you were president of some organization or that you um, organized and implemented some major event. Don't just tell them this, but describe to them how you acted as a leader. So um, you might um, you know, focus in on one particular thing that happened um, during your tenure as an officer for an organization that really shows your leadership. What they're really, they, what they really want to see is that you can be a leader. They want to see that you have been a leader um, and that you're capable of um, doing this. And it's important to note that the writer of your letter of recommendation about leadership abilities and potential must confirm this. So it ideally will be somebody who saw you act as a leader, who knows what you did. Um, so an advisor uh, might be somebody. Um, you know, it really depends what the thing is that you're talking about. And again, this doesn't have to be a campus activity. It could be off campus. It could be with any kind of group. Um, the letter writer doesn't have to be a professor. The letter writer can be. The letter writer doesn't have to be associated with with uh, Notre Dame. Um, they just have to be able to confirm the experience you're talking about and confirm how you acted as a leader. Um, confirm that. Um, 
you really demonstrated the skills that are associated with leadership. And again, that's inspiring people to follow you, um, being able to handle um, you know, obstacles when they come up, um, that kind of thing. So this is very important. These questions before this, they're important, but they are mostly lists of things. These are, here is where the questions really start to matter um, a lot more. Uh, number eight is also very important. This is about a recent particularly satisfying public service activity. So they say recent, so you wouldn't want to be reaching back too far here. They also don't want you to talk about the leadership experience. So your leadership may have been in public service, but you don't want to talk about that here. Here they're looking for something different. So this um, and this can be something ideally it would be something that was longer term a sustained um, public service activity this could be something like um, an uh, internship with a political campaign um, it could be something uh, maybe an internship with a nonprofit organization maybe uh, regular volunteering with an organization it could involve leadership of course but what they want to hear um, about is a something that really shows your commitment to public service. Um, this is a chance for you to indicate this commitment, to demonstrate to them that um, you you care about public service, that you are already engaging in public service in some way. And I should note that hopefully these pieces will fit together. And this is an overall point that is very important for this application. Um, you are answering separate questions. And again, you get about 2,000 characters here as well. So you're answering um, separate questions. But they should all fit together in some way. If you read these questions, these answers that you're providing one after the other, they should flow. They should fit together. It should be presenting a coherent story. So perhaps, for instance, um, you know, the leadership experience um, that you talk about um, led you to this public service activity or um, this was the you know the public service activity perhaps led to your leadership experience or they are both addressing different angles of the same problem. It's nice if these things can connect. If they're two completely different things dealing with completely different issues, that can be okay, but they should fit together. We'll see, for instance, that in the sample application, the um, applicant was very interested in education as the uh, problem or need of society that uh, we'll say she wanted to um, address. And so her answer seven and eight, the leadership and public service activity, both had to do with education. Um, they were uh, descriptions of things that indicated her commitment to education, how that commitment had developed. So that's the kind of thing, again, they're looking for in um, number eight. So for number seven, you want to pick your most significant leadership experience, and for number eight, you want to pick your most significant public service activity um, as related to your future goals. So again, you may have to leave some things out here. That's okay. Number nine um, is the problem or need of society that you want to address when you enter public service. Now, this is important because it is essentially your um, mission statement. This is where you say what you want to do as a public servant. So when you enter education, government, the nonprofit world, or the public interest sector, this is the thing you want to do. This is what's motivating you to do this. Um, so this can be any problem or need of society in any field, but it has to be a clearly defined issue. And you should ideally be able to provide some kind of data or evidence to help convince someone that the problem is important. So if your problem is um, you know, poverty or homelessness, then you'd want to give statistics related to poverty and homelessness. X percent of people in the U.S. Um, 
are under the poverty line. Um, or, you know, global po poverty. X percent of people in the world um, survive on less than a dollar a day. Um, things like that. You can think of this as making your mission statement. I want to address this problem. And then pretend like somebody's asking you, well, why is that important? Why is that worth your time? Why is that such a big problem? And then you provide the evidence. You convince them that, in fact, it is a problem. That's what you're doing here in question nine. And this is important because when you have to do your policy proposal, which we'll get to in a minute, it has to address this issue. It is a proposal to um, alleviate uh, this problem or to potentially solve this problem. So this is a very important question that it really defines your um, mission. Now, the way you want this to work then is that seven and eight, leadership and public service, should help explain how you became motivated to address number nine. So in the sample you'll see that those were education examples which then tie into and kind of explain the motivation for or show a commitment to already addressing the kind of issue mentioned in question nine. Question 10 of the three most significant courses. This is the most academic question that gets asked in the application and um, here you want to pick out interesting um, courses that you took and you'll briefly be able to explain why. You won't have more than really a couple sentences to do this, but you'll want to briefly explain why these courses were significant for you in preparation for your career. So not just interesting classes where you learn something about yourself, but courses that were significant in preparation for your career. And again, this is kind of hinting at some questions we're going to see later. This is a career-oriented application. Here, they're really using these questions to get at your trajectory. So leadership, public service, these are things you have done. The uh, social issue question, um, number nine, is your mission statement. Now, ten, they're look you're starting to look ahead. What are courses you've taken that have prepared you for your career? Number 11, um, this actually comes, I think, at a different place in the online application, but this Washington Summer Institute is um, basically an internship in D.C. I believe it happens the summer after your senior year. Um, Although actually, I think it might be summer after your junior year. Now that I now that I say that, but um, it's okay if you say no. This doesn't affect your chances at all of receiving the scholarship. Um, but if you are interested in this, um, you can look on their website and find examples of where they have placed people in the past. Um, and here you could talk about what you where you'd want to work and what issues you'd like to address. If you wouldn't want to do this, they will want to hear what you have planned for that summer. And perhaps it's study abroad, perhaps it's um, some kind of other internship that you have lined up. You can talk about that here. But that question will not affect your chances. If you say no, that's fine. That won't hurt you at all. Now, 12, 13, and 14 are all um, future tra trajectory questions. So, so far we've got, gotten up to where you are now. Twelve, they want to hear in some detail about the graduate education program you want to pursue. And this is about 400, well, 2,000 characters as well. And um, you want to be pretty specific here. And note that they say program. So, you can talk about multiple programs, and we'll see that the um, sample application, she did talk about multiple programs, but um, you, you want to be as focused as you can here. So the program should be pretty similar. You want to be able to describe the program. So say what it is, say why you want to pursue that program, and say what's unique or interesting about that program. How is that program going to help prepare you for your career goals. Um, we'll see how the other person did this in a moment, but you do not want to sound scattered here. You don't want to say, um, I'm kind of interested in this, and I'm interested in, I've looked at these 12 programs. Ideally, you would present your ideal program here. Assuming that you could go wherever you wanted to, what program would you do and why? 
that's what they want to hear here. It may be two ideal programs, that's fine, but the more programs you try to fit in here, the less you're going to be able to say about each one. So they want to see that this is a thoughtful choice, whether it's law school, um, an MBA, um, an MPP, a regular master's degree of some kind. Um, they want you to be able to explain why. Why does this make sense for you? Um, question 13, uh, what do you hope to do and what position do you hope to have upon completing your graduate studies? And 14 asks the same question in five to seven years. So note that they are asking for a position. So they want you to know what kind of job would you want to have. And again, this is ideally. If after your graduate studies, um, you could have any job you wanted, what position would it be? And you can be specific. I would like to be in this position with this organization doing these things. That's how this answer should be. Um, they're not really asking why here, of course, um, but you should be able to say what you hope to do and what kind of position you want to have. Same goes for 14, and they want to see some kind of growth here. So right after graduate school, you understand that I'd probably start in this position. Five to seven years, I hope to have advanced to this position. You want to show them a trajectory here. You want to show them that you have a plan. Now, they know things can change. They won't hold you to this, but you know they want to see that you have a career trajectory in mind that is linked to public service, that will keep you in the public service realm. Number 15 is an interesting question. and. Um, this is essentially the personal statement part of the application. Now, again, you don't get a lot of room here, but this would be a place to tell a story that didn't fit in somewhere. So you'll note one thing they don't ask elsewhere is why do you care about a social issue? Now, you might hit on that in the leadership or public service questions, but they don't ask, what got you interested in this thing? What's your motivation? Um, so here's a place where you might be able to talk about that. Ideally, this will be personal. This is a place for your personality to really shine. So you might, if you have some interesting um, hobby or some other kind of pursuit. This might be a place to work that in. But ideally, this should be personal information that's relevant to what you're proposing to do here. So for instance, if you are interested in um, homelessness, was there some experience that really made you realize how important the problem was? Um, if you're interested in public health, did you have some experience with um, a disease or did you know someone who did that really inspired you to do this here's a chance to show your passion to kind of show your 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 fire for this thing here you can show them why you care so do not leave this blank um, there's a temptation perhaps to do that but do not leave this blank I will also say this is a place where you can um, Talk about any maybe hardships you've had to face. If you did have to work 40 hours a week throughout undergraduate education, here's a place to explain that. Um, you know, that, that explains why you perhaps weren't able to participate in as much service as you would have liked. Um, you know, if there were, if you had to drop out of school for a semester, here's a place to talk about that. Um, if a study abroad experience really shaped you in some way, you might talk about that here. This is basically the place where after you've answered all the other questions. If there's something that is really important to you, some story you have to tell that didn't fit in, do that here. So that's walking through the application. What I want to note is that it's not, there's no long piece of writing that's part of that section of the application. Um, each question at the most is 300 to 400 words. So what you have to do is be concise and you have to answer the questions in such a way that they do flow together. So you could think of it as one very long essay, but just broken up into parts. So I have a leadership part, a public service part. I often suggest to people that they compose the essay in a single Word doc, or they compose their answers in a single Word document so that they can read them together. 
not as separate answers, but they can read them together just like the reviewers will. So they can see, do these flow? Do these make sense? Am I telling a coherent story here? Do I sound like I have a trajectory? Because again, what you want to show them is that your uh, leadership and public service activities have gotten you to a point or have demonstrated a commitment already to a particular social issue and then that that social issue is motivating you to pursue certain kinds of graduate study which will lead you to a certain kind of career. You want this forward momentum to be clear um, in the application. Now, um, I briefly want to talk about the policy proposal, so let's bring up that. This is a um, part of the application, of course. Um, here it is. And um, this will, of course, look different online, but the proposal has to be about the issue you raise. It has, it can't be more than 500 words, and it should be written as a um, as a memo, in a sense. So note it says to office held issue. So you would want to write this to someone who could do something about the issue. So if you're interested in sustainable energy, it might be the Secretary of Energy, for instance. Um, if you were interested in something related to international development, it might be the director of USAID. Again, this is hypothetical, but they want to see that you kind of pick somebody who could really, who could do something about this, who could make a difference. Um, it's rare that you probably write this to the president, of course, um, but you know, choose somebody high up who could really make a difference here. It can be a local issue. It doesn't have to be a national or international issue. So you could write to a mayor, to a city council person. Um, that would be fine, too. So note that there's three parts here. Problem statement, proposed solution, major obstacles. And each section has its own limits. So I believe you get 200 words for each of the first two and then 100 words for the last. It's something like that. The problem statement. This is essentially where you restate the issue and you convince someone that it's important. So you can kind of think of it as an expansion of that question from the other, from the other part of the application. What's the issue here? Why should you care? Then a proposed solution. So I would solve this issue by doing X. Here's a policy that I would enact, or here's a program that I would start. Um, here's an organization that I would give more money to, and here's why that would solve the problem. That's what you want to do there. Um, and then the major obstacles, you want to, they don't ask you to address the challenges. They only ask you to list what they might be. They're trying to see that you can think about what it means to make change and that you understand that there will always be obstacles to implementation. There will always be challenges and that you can identify, you can anticipate those. So you come up with this great solution, but I anticipate that there'd be some pushback from these people for this reason. You don't have to say how you would address it, although you want to be thinking about that because if you got to the interview stage, they could very well ask you those kinds of questions. But here, um, you just want to present what these obstacles are. There is a space to include information about um, references and footnotes, so you can um, reference things here. That is um, acceptable. Now, the next thing is um, the letters of recommendation, and I just want to really quickly here um, look at the forms for the letters. These forms do not um, they these forms themselves don't have to be um, completed, but it's helpful if they are. Um, so you would ideally give these forms to your recommenders and they would complete them. And then when they submitted your letters of recommendation to us, um, they would include these letter these forms with that. Um, so note that you fill out some of the form ideally and then you present it to them. Now um, what they want to know in this letter is about leadership abilities and potential. And note that this is a very specific thing. So they say, please address the candidate's personal characteristics which you feel contribute to the candidate's leadership abilities. And they give examples of what these are. 
So you have to pick somebody who, one, can confirm the leadership example and say more about it. So the thing you talked about in the application, you get uh, 2,000 characters. The letter writer has no limit. So you may say to your letter writer, well, you know, I, and make sure that they see the answer you gave. You may say to them, well, you know, I talked about this thing, but I really didn't get to talk about this part of it. Could you address that in your letter? They will very likely be happy to do so. So they should talk about the leadership example you give, and they can elaborate on that. And then they should also talk about you personally. Why are you a good leader? So they should talk about what you did that was good leadership. And then why? What qualities do you have that make you a good leader? So it's got to be somebody who um, can talk about that experience, but also knows you well enough to comment specifically on your personal characteristics. Um, and hopefully can give examples. Um, I think this person's confidence makes him a great leader and um, here's how I know that. And then they could give an example of a situation where your confidence was in action. Um, so that's this letter. And it, sh it doesn't have to address anything else. This is a directed letter. Here's commitment to a career in public service. Now Note here that they want to see your commitment to a career. So they want to hear about a significant contribution you've made through various activities. So they want you to, they want this person to say, this person has made this contribution to public service through these activities. And you can talk they can talk about your values, interests, goals, your ambitions, which represent commitment to a career in government or elsewhere in public service. So this letter is very important. It's not tied to a particular activity, but it's the most comprehensive letter that you get. So this should be somebody who knows you the best. Probably the person who knows you the best should write this letter. It can be a professor. It might not be. But you want someone who can really go into detail about the contribution you've made. So ideally you want someone who can talk about how you were a change agent. And they can talk about values, interests, goals, ambitions. They can tell the story, perhaps, of how you became interested in this particular aspect of public service and why they think you will um, go on to have a successful career in this area. So this letter is really, really important. Um, and I would really encourage you to sit down with the person writing this letter and go over these criteria with them. Um, and perhaps they, you may even discuss with them what you know they should talk about here. The third letter is about continuing academic success, and this is perhaps the most straightforward letter. This letter would be similar to what someone would submit as part of a graduate school application. Um, so again, it says intelligence, academic performance, analytical abilities. Here you would want a professor, um, and you want somebody who maybe had had you in multiple classes or who you worked with on research or some kind of independent project. Um, that's the kind of person you want to get here. So, somebody who can really specifically talk about um, essentially how how smart you are and how successful you'll be in whatever graduate program you're proposing. So the purpose of this letter is to kind of confirm that you'll be able to get into the grad program you're presenting and that you'll be successful in it. So again, take these forms seriously. Make sure your letter writers tailor their letters to these to what's being asked for in these forms. If they write generic letters, if they don't address these criteria, you have literally no chance of um, probably being nominated from the university or receiving the award. These letters have to be really tailored to these things. And um, you know, please do, um, if you have not already, send me a list of your recommenders so that I can get in touch with them and offer my um, help. So, we've gone through the application. I, you know, you may have some questions, and I hope that you'll contact me with those questions at fellows, that's plural, at nd.edu. Now I want to go through um, a sample application, and this again was successful. Um, you can see it was a finalist in 2000. And 
12. This person did not end up receiving the Truman Scholarship, but they were invited to interview, which in itself is a pretty significant um, accomplishment. Um, one is educational. Two, now here is a good example of um, what I'm talking about where you'll have limited space to describe things. Note that this person, it's basically one sentence. So, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, nine, ten. I count about 20 words, maybe. Um, so, you will want to list the activity and very briefly describe what you did and try to um, kind of cut to the core of uh, what it was that you did. Um, that is uh, what you'll want to do here. Um, and you'll see the kind of things that are listed, um, working with a research group, being on a committee, athletics, that's on here. Um, orientation, if you were an RA, that might be the kind of thing that was here. So again, you can see the kinds of things that are listed here. And of course, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to pause this if you'd like to look at this in more detail. Um, the reason they ask about high school activities partially is because um, it might show a sustained commitment to something. Some people were involved in something all four years of high school and then continued that involvement in college. Um, and that's something they like to see. Again, that doesn't always happen, and it's fine if it hasn't, but it, this, the high school section can give a sense of a sustained commitment. Um, now here's listing the public service and community or civic activities. Um, again, note that maybe 20 words, uh, maybe 25 words for each one. And um, in some cases, these, you know, eight weeks, eight weeks, 46, 28, six, but note that these were all fairly significant things. They were programs. They were, this wasn't just um, doing a few hours here and there. Um, you know, these were really sustained commitments to things. Um, even though some of them were for limited amounts of time, um, they were still, you know, the program was fully carried out. And note that these are all things that occurred through um, um, out in the community. These were all kind of extra things. Um, number four, they want to hear about government activities. This person had none, so they didn't list any. That was fine. They got an interview anyway. Jobs, again, um, minimal here. The one thing that's useful is they mentioned they were a CAM counselor. That comes up in a way later when they talk about their interest in education. Um, six here, we have uh, various awards that this person was given. Um, so you can see that for a couple of these, they did describe what they were, although they had to do it pretty briefly. Now, this is, again is where the questions start to get interesting. Here's the leadership example. You'll see the 2,000 character limit. Um, and what we get here is a small story that demonstrates this person's leadership. So um, they've decided to focus on this one a program they were a part of where they went in, they saw that the program had no structure, and so then um, she and someone else worked with others to make the program different. So they talk, you know, she kind of sets it up, um, kind of a catchy opening, a little hook, um, and then talking about what the problems were, talking about what they did to address those problems, and then talking about how things had changed. And this is a way that you could set up your thing. And a very brief initial opening that kind of sets the stage, a sec that kind of explains the thing you're going to be talking about, puts it in context. A second part that talks about the problems, a third part that talks about what you did, um, and the fourth part that talks about what changed. And note that there are concrete examples here of what this person did and how things changed afterward. That's important. There need to be specifics about this kind of thing. Um, for the public service activity, it's um, similar in that she's very specific about what she did. Um, so this was just something that was satisfying to her, but is connected to her interest in um, education. So, you know, it's a chance to kind of show how she was able to make a difference through a public service activity. Um, and this, you know, this may not be leadership so much because she was just, you know, running this class. She wasn't leading a group of peers. But um, 
she does talk about how she was able to kind of motivate these kids in this case um, to um, to improve um, and you know the most important thing here I think is to choose some activity that has some relevance that helps to explain or show your commitment to something now question nine the problem or need of society now here mission statement note that the first sentence um, really states the problem um, the K-12 education available to many many of the U.S. children provides little hope for opportunity. And then statistics, 25%, 4.5 times greater, 22%, $22,000 per year. Boom, boom, boom. And then she mentions some ways that the problem has uh, been, a, has tried to be addressed, that people have tried to address this problem, but how um, these issues are not necessarily working. So this is a strong statement about what a problem is and why it's an important problem. And I think this is a really good example of a kind of mission um, statement. Um, moving along, three significant courses, you can see this is very straightforward. Um, and here, you know, all of these things connect in some way to education. That's really the key thing here. Um, I would say you just want to make sure these questions make some kind of sense in the context of your application. You really barely get enough space here to go into any detail about why. But here she's saying, you know, these illustrated certain problems. It told her about certain issues. Um, that's enough here. Now here we get into the graduate program, and here she had three programs in mind. So we can see that that's okay. She didn't just have an ideal program, but these are all in education and policy. They're all connected to that. And she gives some specific reasons about why each program would be useful to her. Now, you know, it can be helpful to just talk about one program at length if it's your ideal program if you really are considering two but I wouldn't really go more than three because I think this already is pushing it in terms of how much she can say but she did get very specific reasons she did get very specific reasons in here about um, why each program was unique um, a capstone experience small size of department at Madison um, then at Harvard a field internship program so you know specific reasons that connect to her interests so um, I think you know it might be more useful to focus in on one or two so you can say more but you know I'd say three is probably the max and now let's look at these other answers that showed the trajectory I mean you can note the character limits here 2000 for graduate education 900 for each of these next two so here graduate studies then gaining teaching experience then principle. So this is a progression. I'm going to get this degree, I'm going to teach, and then I'm going to be a principal. And here is what I would do as a principal. And note, she's even specific about this being in a Baltimore City public school. She's very specific about the position she wants, and then specific about what she wants to do. Um, same goes with question 13, principal, and then superintendent. Now, these are big goals that's fine. It should be something that would be reasonable to achieve in five to seven years, um, but it should show a progression that really connects to things you've done. So she did things that got her exposure to education. This motivated an interest in a particular policy issue, uh, basically equal education opportunity. She's going to go to a graduate program that will help her learn more about that issue and then she's going to enter into a career in the kinds of schools, in the kind of districts um, that she wants to change. Teacher, principal, superintendent. Clear progression. And ideally your progression would be similarly clear. Um, you know, they are not asking about what positions you hope to have, what things might you want to do. This is your ideal and it should make sense. Um, Note that she even kind of goes a little further here and talks about heading the Office of Innovation and Improvement. That's okay. You don't have to go beyond five to seven years, but you could if there was room to do so. Um, now, 
this is really interesting, I think, because um, this is additional personal information that she uh, wishes to share with the Truman Foundation. Um, now, what's interesting is that she gets in here some things that didn't fit elsewhere in the application but she thinks are important. Her interest in hockey, um, her work in uh, Senegal, um, some of the things she had done in South Bend, but note that it's all kind of driven toward explaining what drives her to work for change in education in urban American schools. It's all ultimately about education. And I think what's really the first paragraph here is particularly interesting in that it, it itself doesn't seem to have anything to do about education, but she's trying to make a point about um, childhood here. She's connecting this to what education, what childhood should be, and how um, the reality is that it's often not for many people. So I think this is a really good example of what you can do with this answer. It's a very brief kind of personal statement that can explain your motivation um, for something and it can explain your motivation by bringing in other interesting things you've done that just didn't fit the narrative. So you only get to talk about a leadership activity and a public service experience. One of each. So if you've done other interesting things, this is where you bring that up and hopefully you can connect it to whatever your mission uh, is. Now let's look at this policy proposal. Note it's about education because that was her issue. Who's she writing to? Secretary of Education. Um, and note that we get a similar um, problem to what she had stated in the application although um, she, frame, she phrases it a little bit differently. But note urgent crisis, here are the problems, and then statistics. And each statistic is cited um, with a note. Um, and essentially she's proposing changes, um, or not changes, but things that could be funded through Race to the Top grants in this case, which is an educational program. So again, clearly urgently pointing out the problem, talking about the proposed uh, solution here. Again, being specific to community building initiatives. Here they are, one, two, and then some obstacles. Um, some might say that the funds should be spent differently. Again, note that she's not, um, she's, she's sort of addressing how these might help, but you know, you don't have to discuss how your proposal overcomes these challenges. All you have to do are state the challenges. So you get 200 words for your problem, 200 for the solution, 100 for the obstacles. And then, of course, she has some footnotes here, which don't count toward those 500 words. Um, so you can, of course, go back and pause elements of this to see um, you know, what it looks like. But I think that's a good example of the kind of application that can be successful. And presumably, she had wonderful letters um, to support that, to kind of back up the things she was saying. There was somebody who could say, yeah, uh, she was a great leader. She really came into this program and changed things in an amazing way. Um, she probably had someone really commenting on her commitment to education, maybe somebody she had taken an education class with, somebody she had worked with in volunteering. And the academic thing, same way, somebody who could testify to her ability to um, really succeed in these um, top-ranked education graduate programs. So, you know, the, the bottom line here, I think the thing I want to emphasize more than anything else is that what you are doing here is um, presenting an argument for how you are likely to be a change agent in your career. And you're doing that by presenting evidence of your leadership and commitment to public service, which letters will support. So you're showing, well, I've already been a leader. I'm already committed to public service. Here's how you know that. You're uh, showing them that you have developed a mission, that you've got an issue you want to address and that you've already hopefully begun to address in some way through your leadership in public service. 
and then that you have a trajectory in mind, a fairly specific trajectory that's going to allow you to impact that issue. And it doesn't have to be one where you'd be addressing that issue in full right away. Note in the example, teacher, then principal, then superintendent. You know, but there has to be some kind of progression here, some path uh, to a position that will allow you to do something about this thing you care about. Um, so you're really telling, telling the story. You're making an argument that you're going to be a change agent. You're convincing them um, that you are already are and you're convincing them that you are going to continue to be one and this is what your letters should be doing too. So I hope that this was useful um, in going through the application. Please don't hesitate to contact me with questions that you may have. Um, the way the process works is that on the campus deadline um, the complete applications are due. Uh, you will complete the application online and submit it. I'll be able to return it to you. And then you'll have the three letters of recommendation and an unofficial transcript submitted to fellows at nd.edu, um, all by the campus deadline. Then there will be campus interviews uh, early in December, probably the week of December 9th is what we're looking at for 2013. Um, then the committee, based on the interviews and the written application, will determine up to four campus nominees. And you will know before uh, the end of finals who those nominees are. And then the four nominees will have a chance to revise their applications before the final deadline on February 4th, and they'll continue to work with uh, Qs um, and other um, people on campus to refine their applications. And we'll also have the chance to give letter writers feedback if necessary. But I will say that the Notre Dame nominations, for the Truman especially, tend to be competitive. And so you want to make sure that you um, are putting forth your best effort for the campus um, deadline. So please, again, let me know if you have any questions. Um, I am very willing to help. I'd like to see um, some really strong a a applications come out this year. Um, I think we have the potential to have uh, all four nominees um, become finalists. I think we have those kind of people here, and I'd like to see that happen, and I'm happy to help in any way I can. So please be in touch with questions, and um, I look forward to working with you in the weeks and months ahead. Thank you for your time.